constantly happening. And seed is the ultimate embodiment of continuous creation. In one little seed is an entire tree. And not just one plant, hundreds and thousands. But even more importantly, not just plants for the next generation, but plants forever. Because from the seed comes the seed, comes the seed, comes the seed. In, in our language, we call seed bij. J is life. And B is that in which life arises on its own forever. And when we sow a seed, we say a very simple prayer. May this seed be exhaustless. Because seed is not supposed to get exhausted. So the two very unique characteristics of seed are one, to regenerate. And the second is to multiply. So it's in the very nature of seed to never run out. Now that's how nature has constantly created enough for people's need and enough for the future. And there's been no difference between the seeds and grains uh, we eat and that which we save for seed in an ecological farming. Now as, as long as farming was done for food and for taste and was done so farmers have livelihoods, that's how it worked. You grew a crop, you saved some seed, you ate the rest and you continuously had food. But a few decades ago, the big companies who had created chemicals, the chemicals that were used in the war, which were then used in agriculture, pesticides, herbicides, they started to get into the seed sector. And they said, it's not fair that farmers save seeds because they're stealing from us, because we could make all this money. And that's how the corporations think just now. They first work out how they could make money, and if they can't, they define that as theft. I'll give you an example. Canada did not want to sell its water. The company wanted to buy its water and sell it in California. Canada said, we don't want to sell it. Also, they sued the country. They sued British Columbia and said, you're stealing our profits. Now, these chemical companies did the same with seeds. They said, we have to have laws that prevent farmers from saving seeds. And normally, when something so crazy is introduced in society, a very fancy word is created. They defined a term called intellectual property rights. And they said seed is their intellectual property. In order to define seed as their property, the companies realize that first they will modify it slightly. And that's why they created genetic engineering and transgenics. So that they bring a gene from a bacteria and put it into the plant and say, now we've made something new. Now we are creators, therefore we are owners. The fertility of the seed comes out of pollination. So in fact, for the next generation of the seed, you need fertilization. And fertilization is communication. It is a commons. It has to be shared. But by declaring it at intellectual property, sharing becomes a crime, saving becomes a crime. Now, as I said, genetic engineering is because of patenting. And the patent means no one else can use, make, produce, distribute it, what they have patented. And because patenting is related to collection of royalties, like rents, but you know, we, people collect rents from houses, Monsanto collect rents from the next generation of plants. The, the result of all this has been that today Monsanto controls, one company controls 95% of all genetically engineered sow seed sold anywhere in the world. And because they w want to sell the seeds on which they can collect royalties, they spread these transgenic seeds. So there are right now only four kinds of crops that are spreading. Corn, canola, soya, cotton. India used to have 200,000 rice varieties, 1,500 mango varieties, hundreds of thousands of banana varieties. All that diversity disappears because everything's becoming corn and soya, corn and soya, corn and soya. Because the whole idea of genetic engineering was to own seeds and life, now the companies don't have to use the argument that they have engineered a plant. They're just taking over ownership of plants. 
And these companies are now buying up all the local seed companies so that there's nothing but a monopoly. Only five companies control all the seed supply of the world. But seed is what makes food. So when you control the seed, you control the food. But because this is now about profits, someone has to pay for those profits. When nature gives us the seed, it doesn't collect a rent from us. When I go to seed collections with farmers, they share it freely. So seed which belong to the farmers as a whole, as a community, now becomes property for which the farmers must pay the royalty to the company. And in conditions like India, a farmer who has to pay 10 times more for seed and every year, because now seed is non-renewable, rather than renewable, it's been made non-renewable, the farmers are pushed into debt. 200,000 Indian farmers have committed suicide because they were deeply indebted because of these seed monopolies. So the whole issue of seed is important for many reasons. First, I think it's the most important ecological work to protect biodiversity, but how will you protect it if you don't have the seeds of biodiversity? Second, for farmers and rural livelihoods, if they don't have access to seed as a common public property, then we won't have small farmers. So protecting agriculture means protecting seeds. And finally, it's an issue of all of us who have to eat food. Everyone has to eat. If there is dic seed dictatorship, then the eaters have no choice of eating healthy food. Because the, the non-renewable seeds are toxic seeds. They're narrow in their diversity. Seed is the source of fertility. Now it's being made sterile. The prayer we, we say for seed, let this be exhaustless, now the corporate prayer is, let this be exhausted every year so my profits are exhaustless. The profits of Monsanto doubled last year during the food crisis. They increased the price of their corn seed by $100 a bag. Now, so far they control, like I said, four crops totally, but they want to control all crops. If we haven't saved the seeds of those other crops, then we are not just in a seed dictatorship. What is worse, we will have very large-scale disasters because they aren't smart enough to be able to engineer seed for a changing climate or for all the diversity of climates the world has. So we can't afford to let seed be um, reduced to a monoculture and a monopoly. We have to keep it diverse and we have to keep it decentralized in people's hands.